we got a package from Hornby the other day. You can tell it's from Hornby because it's got this tape stuff. Um, yeah, so package from Hornby. Wonder what it is. Hmm. Oh, that's my invoice. Yeah. Of course. Right, so first things first, this isn't going to be a review style of video. This is just going to be a quick showing of not one, but two of these special edition Dublo, or Dublo, I never, I can never pronounce the damn thing, Scotsman's that Hornby are making for the centenary. As you can see, they've learned their lesson from the W1 disaster, so they've actually got this thing wrapped up pretty well. Not as well as the 9F that you'll see in a later review, because that thing, that brown outer box you just saw, when I got that my 9F, that brown box was wrapped in bubble wrap as well. So, like I said, this is the second... Um, Duplo Scotsman's. I do have another one. You'll see that later on in the video. But yeah, let's take a look at it. Right, so before we take a look at the locomotive, let's talk, let's talk about this packaging here. Um, so you got the sleeve. Nice. Um, typical sleeve. Doesn't talk about the locomotive. I mean, it's the flying fucking Scotsman. Um, <laughs> so let's get rid of that. Then you have this foam. It's really thick foam. Good foam. And then underneath you have your little useless plaque thing. Um, I'm looking at this upside down, so yeah. So here's your plaque. Uh, depending on which model you've gotten, as you can see, this is the uh, Pegler Scotsman. So this is 1963. My other Scotsman, uh, you'll see, has um, 2016. So and then underneath, it's got like this. Talks about fun Scotsman. Talks about like the specific era. Uh, again, uh, I do apologize about the glare. Specific era of um, the model you got. Then no. Um, then underneath, you have your instructions right here. Nothing different. Um, except you'll see that this has a uh, completely different style of uh, tender connection. So Hornby have finally upgraded, and you'll see that. I'll show you guys that later on. But uh, you also get your limited edition um, certif certificate. Certif I can never say the damn word. Certification. There we go. <laughs> and I'm um, not sure if you can see, but mine is 102. Which um, <laughs> I, I kind of wish I got 103. Uh, I envy that person. But yeah, so this is where the model would be. And here is the model, still in its ice cube packaging, which we will take it out of right now. Alright, so here we have our two Hornby Dublo or Dublo Flying Scotsmans. This one is the Pegler version, and then this one obviously is the Scots uh, Scotsman as he is now. So the one we just unboxed obviously is the Pegler version. Um, one thing I do want to talk about though is the tender connection. Because the tooling, apart from apart from this being entirely made of die cast, apart from the tender, the locomotive body uh, is entirely die cast. Whereas, like on the main the main range ones, they do have uh, a plastic body, but the running board is die cast. Anyway, apart from that, those are the only differences between the current tooling and this. So, if we can just move this out of the way here, real quick. The tender connection is different. 
Columbia finally upgraded to a uh, what I call the plug and play style of connection. So how easy is it to disconnect the locomotive from the tender? Right. And then as you can see, the it has the it's a very dapple uh, in my opinion, it's a very dapple esque uh, style of connection. So you have the little like PCB thing. It is a bit loose. It's very loose. And then you have the connection here. So putting them back together is fairly simple, as you can see. That's all you got to do. So this is a lot better than the horrible harness and wire thing that is exhibited by that in the background and previous other Hornby models. It is also a hell of a lot better than Bachman's sorry attempt on the V2. So, with that out of the way, let's take a, let's <laughs> separate this again and uh, take a closer look at the detail. Right, so first things first, since this is a die-cast body locomotive, it is very, very heavy. I can already tell that this is a lot heavier than my uh, original A3, which is the original tooling with the plastic, the all-plastic tooling, essentially. It is much heavier than this, and that that is a good thing, in my opinion. Because uh, a lot of people were wondering, are these worth it? And yes, the price tag, yeah, it's a lot. But to be honest, these are more geared towards the collectors, but if you do run this, uh, these locomotives like I plan to, uh, these will be really, really good haulers. Uh, so much so, I think they'd be better than the current main range versions with the die-cast running board. I don't know how much these weigh, I'll probably go do that at some point. Um, but yeah, these things are very, very heavy, and that is a good thing. I think they might be a little too heavy for their own good though, because <laughs> this did have a little problem with running. But yeah, one thing I will say is Hornby, uh, apart from that, that's not good. Um, Hornby's quality has massively improved. There is not a single broken thing on this model. There's n there are some things I do have issues with. Um, if I turn it over to this other side here, um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there are some like glue marks on the handrails and then there's the mold line because you don't have it on the top anymore you have it like on the side and as you can see perfectly actually uh, the seam line on the boiler is yeah <laughs> that's not good on a 300 plus model but there's nothing broken which is good and in my case, that's the more important thing, because I do have a problem with Hornby locomotives. There's nothing broken, nothing is bent, nothing is out of shape, nothing is loose. Everything is where it should be. You do have movable, posable um, vents. The cab detail is absolutely sublime, as always. There's also a flickering firebox in these. Uh, I, it's a pointless feature, in my opinion, but it does look nice, as you'll see when I get this running on the rolling road. You have your full plate, which is made of metal. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Oh my god, it's got a Speedo. I just noticed that. Oh god, it's got a Speedo. Oh god. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is the Dublo Flying Scotsman. This is Pegler Scotsman. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful, beautiful model. The only thing I don't like, apart from the seam line and the glue marks, are the horrendous printed nameplates. Those things are definitely getting replaced with proper etched ones here in the future. So, that's the locomotive. Let's put that aside. The tender is equally done to the same standard. So you have your little dapple inspired by uh, dapple tender connection, but it is a lot better than Bachmann's. You do have this, like, lamp iron here. I just noticed that. It's like a little lamp iron there. Has this been out of focus the whole time? Oh, well. But, yeah. The green. Let me talk about that. The green is... We'll see on the BR one. But the green 
Chef's Kiss. It, it's, it's great. It's a lot better than how it is on the Thompson Pacifics. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, Hornby has massively upped their, their game here when it comes to uh, this last uh, the, the, this last year, in fact. Uh, 2022, even 2023, and moving forward. There's that horrible, 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 horrible glazing on that <laughs> porthole. Corridor, tender. This is actually my first locomotive with a corridor tender, believe it or not. Hmm. The coal load is removable, but I'm not going to take it out because it's an absolute nightmare to put back in. And then the tender has pickups as well. You have your NEM tension lock coupling, sprung buffers as well on both the locomotive and the tender. But yeah, going back to quality, um, whatever factory they're using, Hornby, please keep using it. Because you, you, you guys have made some really stellar models in the last year uh, since the disaster that was the Thompson Pacifics. Right, so here we have the BR version. Let's separate that. And similar, similarly to the Pegler, the Pegler version, this one is equally as impressive. This was the one I was more concerned about, though, because, as you can see, she's got smoke reflectors. So um, I was more concerned about those falling off in transit, which, um, thankfully, they did not. But, yeah, equally as impressive. They're... The only, again, same with the Pegler Scotsman. The only problem I have with it is the seam line on the boiler. As you can see, it's it's actually more prominent here than it is on the apple green one, in my opinion. But yeah, that's that's nah, um, it's better than having it on the top, I suppose. But yeah, so this is Scotsman as she is now, as she's currently running around on the main line in BR Brunswick Green with the number 60103. Then speaking of the green, the green. This is the best Hornby green I have ever seen in a very long time. And that says something. Uh, it was the same with the rebuilt Hush Hush. The green on that was to a similar level and on the 9F Evening Star. The green on that was amazing. This is the best green Hornby I've ever done, in my opinion. And I state again, please keep using whatever factory you are using, because <laughs> some of your best models and your best work has come from that factory. <laughs> so yeah, cab detail more or less the same. It's 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 more or less the same. Speedo, horrid horrid speedo. Uh, the deflectors on the cab, those are all intact. Sliding roof fence. The smoke deflectors, they look pretty good as well. Don't know if you can see. Um, I'm trying to get the I'm trying to get the whole thing in frame, but like I've got my light hovering over me and then my tripod right next to me. So maybe here. Maybe. No? Are you gonna Hmm. There we go. There we go. Camera's back. Right, so you can see all the rivet detail on the smoke box. You got your shed plate there, and then 60103. Mm, that could be better. I've just noticed that. Yeah, that could be a little better. Sprung buffers. You can see all the lamp irons are intact, they're not bent. You have your warning label there, or I'm trying to. I was going to say something about the finish, because these, when these were announced, they did have, uh, Hornby did state that these were to have a semi-gloss, and at first I don't see it, but then when I shine light on it, you can see it's, it's a lot, it's a, it's a hell of a lot better than that ultra flat finish that a lot of Hornby locomotives had in the past. So, again, I state. Please keep using whatever factory you are using currently. So you have the nameplates. These are going to be replaced with proper S1s. Speedo. Link motion. 
the lining is absolutely superb as well. There's not, there's actually no uh, printing errors, you know, like you get with some of the other models where you have like mismatch lining or spots of paint in places where spots of paint shouldn't be. You have your builder's plate there, which probably is legible, but I'm not sure if my camera's going to pick up on that. So, yeah, and then you have root availability 9 on the cab side. The cab doors as well are staying in place. You can get a better look at the cab detail. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, that's about as good as it's going to get. But yeah, reverser. The mechanism, if you're concerned about it, the mechanism is exactly the same as the... Uh, the main range ones with the five pole motor, brass bearings and such. So yeah, that's the locomotive of you know current preserved Scotsman. Let's take a look at the tender real quick. The tender, I <laughs> call me a purist. The tender is still wrong. <laughs> it looks good, but it's still wrong. Um, and what, I, what do I mean by that? Well, Scotsman, when she was preserved by Alan Pegler, d despite contrary to popular belief, Scotsman did not always have a quarter tender. She lost it uh, right after the, I believe, her record-breaking run from her non-stop run. She lost her tender after that, and she was stuck with a non-quarter, I believe a streamlined non-quarter tender. And it wasn't until Pegler came along and bought her that he stuck a quarter tender behind her and uh, the tender in mind is one from Lord Farringdon which was a four which participated in the 1948 exchange trials and uh, in doing so the this whole section right here this whole section is cut out uh, I'll put up a picture somewhere but y you can see what I'm talking about like see how it's Horizontal, like if I, if you look at it from this angle, you can see how it's horizontal. Um, it's just completely horizontal. There would be like a dip right here. There would be a dip right there uh, where the water filter is. So um, yeah, I'm actually kind of upset Hornby didn't modify the tooling to uh, you know to accommodate for Scotsman as she is now. Because that's, in my opinion, that's a very characteristic thing of Scotsman uh, and, sh and she's always had that again since Pegler bought her and the Pegler Scotsman is the exact same it's the same tender it's just there's no cutout here so that's something I think Hornby could have done uh, they could have modified the tooling now I've seen people do that I've seen people take the uh, actually like cut out this section I'm not going to do that because I don't want to risk damaging a 300 plus pound model I don't know I might do it eventually maybe one day I might do it to Pegler Scotsman because there's black on the on, on um, up here but as you can see it's just green and I don't have a green that can match this um, yeah so I'm not going to modify it you can if you want but I'm not going to so that's that little rant over now talking about the tender um, very light as usual with Hornby um, very light tenders heavy locomotives very light tenders uh, the decoder I believe is in the is in the tender I don't know if it's 8 pin or 21 pin it probably is 8 pin if I'm not mistaken uh, why why are we still using 8 pin when you're upgrading models to 21 pin Hornby I don't understand because the purple bullied that was 21 pin why couldn't these be 21 pin as well I don't know I, I don't know I just don't know but yeah, um, tender looks good, decoration, lining, all that, done to a really high standard, no broken bits or pieces, sprung buffers, pick up on all eight wheels, all that fun jazz. So that concludes this video of this little showcase featuring the brand new Hornby Dublo Double uh, fine Scotsmans that were released this year to celebrate her centenary. Um, now what do I think? Uh, these are fantastic, uh, despite the fact that they are extremely heavy and um, they're also extremely expensive. The, um, 
a lot of people are going to complain about the price. Actually, a lot of people already are. Uh, they were complaining when these were released. Um, the, the, what people need to understand is these aren't main range models. Um, if they were, I believe the prices the price would have been a lot different. Um, if these were released like with the standard, I'd say standard, the now standard diecast running board or plastic body uh, A3 tooling, I think the price would have been lower, and I think. I, I think we probably won't be seeing as much complaining. H however, that being said, I think this one, the Burns of Green Scotsman, as she is currently running right now, I think Hornby should have did a rerun of that in um, in this year's range, in the 2023 range, because I remember when this was announced and released back in like 2016 to celebrate her return to Steam. And these models sold out like really quickly. To this day, I I can barely find one that is in one piece <laughs> so um, that's the main reason why I got this one because I was not missing out again but yeah I think Hornby should have did a rerun of this for the main range just a thought as for this one this one wasn't originally one I was going to pre-order I don't think I've said that but uh, I ended up pre-ordering it anyway because of um, I hate to be that person but uh this is my Scotsman. Um, this is the Scotsman I'm used to seeing. This is not. Um, I'm used to apple green, 4472, LNR corridor tender. Not so much the red back nameplates, but I'm used to. Oops, I'm used to this Scotsman. This is the Scotsman I grew up knowing and I'm more familiar with. However, this one, I I, I can see. I can see that like 60103, Brunswick green, smoke deflectors, double chimney, all that. I can see this being for modern enthusiasts, this is their Scotsman, but from the majority of people, this is our Scotsman. Um, and even to this day, people are still complaining about, uh, it's a really stupid reason, but like, people are complaining that, um, oh, why didn't they just repaint Scotsman into Elliot Green for her centenary, yada yada yada, I'm like... <sighs> All of this hard work that they did with this, this version, to get her in like this, it would have been all for nothing. Because mechanically, this is this is how she is at her best. With the double chimney, the Kyle Chap exhaust, um, a proper A3 boiler, not an A4 like she's had for the majority of her preserved life. This, this is how she is at her best. I'll just leave it at that. Now, uh, detail pack, um, you don't get much, you just get your basic, uh, you know, your usual stuff. One thing I have noticed, though, um, I don't know if you can see, but one thing I have noticed is, uh, the footsteps are, where are they? Um, there they are. The footsteps are not fitted to the models anymore, so, um, I mean, I don't know why, because there weren't really that much of an, um, intrusion anyway. But uh, that's nice. Also, one thing I have noticed is you can actually put front couplers on this now. If you want to use those god-awful tension lock couplings, you can actually do that now. There's like a little... Like, yeah, right there. Yeah. There's like a little... You can see that right there. This bit right here. That plugs into the bogey. Whereas on previous iterations of these models, uh, you couldn't do that. So, I guess when we have than that um, little thing for us and you also get crew so much like the 9F you get painted crew in my opinion it's whatever I don't like crew in my engines so I mean cool I guess but um yeah and uh, just before we end I would like to point out that I think I am the only American who didn't buy the US tour Scotsman. I'll just leave it at that. But um yeah, so prices for these are I think 362 at Hornby and then somehow the retailer retailers have got their own. They're like at 326, but they're probably already gone by the time I get this video up. So um yeah, so I personally I think these are worth it. Cuz like I said, diecast you probably will be able to pull a lot more instead of um just having a diecast running board, you also have a diecast boiler and a diecast running board 
and a die-cast chassis. So I think you could probably pull a lot more than the original plastic bodied and uh, the, the recent iterations with the die-cast swing board. So that's that. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. Um, do feel free to subscribe if you want to, like the video and all that fun jazz, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.